So it's here talking about Quinn 3 235B A22B. That is a mouthful of a model name. Uh, in short, I'd say it's, I'm thankful it exists. I think it's super cool that Quinn is releasing these models open source. But it's not my job to hype up a company or a model if it doesn't do the job that I want. And that's what I want to talk about in this video today. Don't worry, though. I do actually plan to do some more reviewing of the local model. But I will say, for coding right now, I have to say it's probably not going to be a fit for that. This is early. I haven't totally tuned everything. I haven't checked everything. But for the local model, the Quinn 3 particular 32B perimeter model, it just does way too much thinking. I mean, way too much thinking to be useful in local models. In fact, let me just show you an example of this. This is Quinn 32B, Quinn 332B. And it thought for 16 minutes and 37 seconds to make a freaking snake game. Uh, now try putting this in Rue code or something like that. That's going to be painful. Uh, now, to be fair, I don't have this tuned properly. I did actually use a temperature that they had recommended that I could find. Uh, so about the reasoning temperature model or the reasoning temperature that I have, which is my reasoning model preset. 6.11 tokens per second. So even if this were tripled, or quadrupled, it's still a pretty significant amount of time. And what happened is it actually ran pretty fast, but it filled up the context window, as you can kind of see down here. Um, and then that slowed down a lot. Okay, now we're gonna move over to talk about pieces of the blog post I did. Their flagship model that they're open waiting, open sourcing is Quinn 3 235B A22B. That name may feel like a mouthful, but I actually really like it. That's the engineer in me. Quinn 3 is the family. 235B is the total size of the model. A22B is the activated parameters. So it's a mixture of experts model so they can activate 22 billion parameters at a time. I'm really fascinated with the way these models actually work. I think it's a fantastic thing that they're open sourcing this. So all the negative stuff that I'm gonna say about it, I just wanna say I'm so thankful Quinn 3 exists. And I also think that their technology that they're using um, being out in the world hopefully will help advance everything forward. But they pull some of the same old stuff that every other model actually pulls. Competitive results and benchmark evaluations of coding, including Gemini 2.5 Pro. Why make that claim? I would have probably let this go and been like, yeah, this is fair, if they would have kept it at DeepSeek R1, O1, and O3 Mini. Rock 3 and Gemini 2.5 Pro especially, in my opinion, is just too bold of a statement there. There is actually two MOE models. There's a Quinn 3 30 billion A3B. This might be the smallest uh, version of an MOE model that I've seen, so I'm excited about testing that a little bit more and seeing what people do with that and building on top of it. They actually do have six dense models as well, which I appreciate them doing. Because you take this Quinn 3 32B, I can then use speculative decoding with Quinn 3 0.6b and probably get some boost in speed there. Uh, a few other things is they have the post-trained models like the Quinn 3 30b A3b uh, along with their pre-trained counterparts, which is Quinn 3 30, 30b A3b base. So they give you the base model so you can actually post-train your own version of it if you want. And they also, this is the thing that's so good about them, they open sourcing it. And this is the thing that's so good about them. Quint 3 is open sourcing it, hoping to significantly advance the research and development of large foundation models. This model also is a hybrid thinking model, which allows you to have a thinking mode and non-thinking mode. Now, it seems that these hybrid models actually, they do have the mode and in the UI I can turn thinking on and I can turn thinking off and I've tested both of those. But it also says the flexibility. So basically, it allows you as a user to control how much thinking it does, which is something that I don't know if it's possible, especially in the local, like the small models. I'm not sure how to really fine tune its budget or things like that via Olama or LM Studio or things like that. So I need to do more digging on that in particular. But it is a really cool thing to be able to do that. It's just in testing, I don't think they have the ability to be able to control that, at least in open source, um, the open source models or the frameworks that you run them in today. 
other than like prompt engineering, which is what I've been using across the board. A couple more things. These are some benchmarks that they claim. Uh, they've got live inch at 70.7 for Quinn 3 235B versus Gemini 2.5 Pro at 70.4. I'd say the Aider one's probably a little bit more in line, but even that number seems high to me after testing, just to be totally, totally fair there. 61.8 compared to 72.9. There is some interesting behavior that I'm just going to have to run through. What we really need to do is we need to test. Um, the other piece is uh, Code Force is the ELO rating. It's claiming the highest ELO rating. Those you got to take with a grain of salt because while it can be meaningful over time, I think it's probably too early to base it off that 2056 rating there. And for it to be higher than uh, Gemini 2.5 Pro by 55 points, it's, it, it's probably meaningless at this point. Now we move over to the Quinn 330B A3B, which is the post-trained model. That's the mixture of experts model. And you can kind of see here that it claims that according, it's basically double the score of DeepSeq V3 in Live Code Bench and almost double the score in the ELO rating. Again, super bold claims that I'm having a hard time even backing up any kind of relevance for real world. And that's where I'm going to uh, start moving into the tests that I've been doing. I'm about to go to like the evals that I've been doing. The price is relatively cheap. We've got 40 cents on the input, $1.20 on the output, and $8 if you have thinking mode, which... Again, via the API, I've actually had a hard time figuring out how to control that, uh, specifically when using the uh, Alibaba console, the Al Alibaba cloud. And the reason for this is if you try to use the open router ones that are out, they all only have 41K contacts. It's absolutely useless, to be totally honest with you, in anything day-to-day -day work coding. So if you don't want to use Alibaba cloud, which honestly I wouldn't, uh, you really can't code with these in root code currently without overriding the system prompt and doing a bunch of finagling to try to get it to work. So I took one for the team and I ended up testing the Quinn Plus 2025 4-28 model by signing up for Alibaba's cloud and got that configured to go. And I confirmed that that's the latest one because I was testing both the Quinn Max one and the Quinn Plus one. And I ended up messaging them and they told me it's Quinn Plus 2025 4-28 is the latest two here's the overall list of models that they support on their alibaba cloud the two that i looked at were quinn max latest and quinn plus 2025 428 now my evals were this and i actually did use the quinn 3 plus to try to actually do just some minor things in my code base it just does not work with root code um remember this is the 235b parameter model just to be very clear they name it Quinn 3 Plus. So this is the open source one. It does have more context window. Uh, so really, if you look at Quinn 3 Max latest, it actually does make a ranking here. It actually sits between GPT 4.1 and Grok 3 Mini High. Uh, I will say the GPT 4.1 is kind of an anomaly because you put it in an orchestrator, it shoots up in score. The problem with GPT 4.1 is it's just a lazy model. Absolutely lazy. Um, so yeah, Quinn 3 Plus is just absolutely broken when you try to do any sort of coding with it. Uh, it thinks it's made this folder. This folder does not exist. It's trying to CD into it. Uh, for some reason, it subtasked into a code mode from code mode, which I don't ever see models doing. It, it's just the most bizarre thing. Like it, it literally, I've tried this 12 different times. All 12 are failures. You cannot use Quinn 3 Plus 4, 28, 25B. Um, you cannot use Quinn 3 Plus 4 28 25 in root code whatsoever. And I would assume the Alibaba hosted model is going to be the utmost configured. So I'm not even holding my breath for the open router ones. And that goes without saying that the uh, micromanager evals failed and they failed spectacularly uh, into the point where it would actually switch into architect mode and do a, a decent plan. It would call some MCPs and then it would just start being gibberish. Um, I mean, it was still trying to do the thing. It would forget that it's doing the plan and maybe that's the context window. Maybe there's something going on there. 
But anyway, it would sometimes switch back to micromanager. And if it did, micromanager would think that the entire thing was done after the architect mode. Uh, if it didn't switch back to micromanager, it would get stuck going through just a loop of talking to itself about architecture things forever. It just, it was the weirdest thing ever. So Quinn 3 Plus just does not work with root code. And I could not use it to really complete any eval by itself. I think this model is not built for coding. It's not for us. Super unfortunate because I really do want a good open source model that is built for coding. But I will give you a But I will give you an example. Uh, here's Quinn 235B on the left and Gemini Pro 2.5 on the right. So here's the Gemini 2.5 Pro one. You can see we've got a pretty decent looking pool table. So I think from an artistic standpoint, they did a great job. So physics are pretty crap, just to be totally honest with you. Um, sometimes you can get good physics with Gemini 2.5 Pro. Sometimes you just have to kind of iterate over that. So uh, this isn't terrible. It's a good starting point. This is what... Quinn 3, 235B, or Quinn Plus actually came up with. Um, the physics are okay. Uh, let me just run that again to show you. I'm going to do it a little bit slower this time. You can kind of see the physics actually seem pretty decent. There are times the balls will just totally run off the screen. See that red ball just went off the screen there. Uh, and then there's times the balls will stick together. So the physics are by no means perfect, but they are better than Gemini 2.5 Pro. So uh, in my mind, I would say I would much rather start with Gemini Pro 2.5 instead of Quinn 235B. Uh, we've got all the pockets actually work over here. We've got a good, this needs to be changed to rotation and the physics need to be tweaked. This needs a lot of work. And this does have some of the same problems Gemini Pro 2.5 has where both will kind of like hang around each other. So final thoughts. It's unfortunately just not usable in root code. It's not actually a good coding model in general. I ran a bunch of tests in uh, the chat.quin.ai. And if you want to test that, you can go to chat.quin.ai, sign up with the junk email account. Uh, this is my spam account. But basically, here's one of the tests that I run uh, just to kind of get a feel for how it works. And a lot of the thinking is it generating uh, different code. It's just a lot of thinking, significant amount of thinking. And that and this, for example, is the pool game one that we generated. And you can kind of see here, let me scroll up here. I'll show you the amount of thinking that this one actually did as we go through it too. So it did 38,912 token budget, but this is how much thinking it actually did. It's just a significant amount of thinking. I, I'm very curious how, how much of that 38,912 it generated or filled um, in its thinking. Uh, I also did some on generating a basically a Rubik's cube with thinking on, and then I generated one with thinking off. Now thinking off is significantly faster, uh, but the results are a lot worse. In my testing, I did quite a bit of testing without thinking on. Yeah, I think that's going to sum it up. Meh. Uh, excited that it exists, but for coding, meh. And it makes me feel bad that I have to say that. Um, so if you made it this far, let me know your thoughts below. If you've been, have any luck with this model as code with the coding model, again, it may be great at other things and that's not my job here to review it in those categories. So this is specifically targeted to, can we use this in our day jobs? And if you happen to make it to the end and wouldn't mind giving me a like and consider subscribing, that would mean the world to me. But until then, peace out everyone.